Go live. Three, two, and one. The spring football tour continues on. Our next stop, Happy Valley, State College, Pennsylvania, and the Penn State Nittany Lions. Hello, everybody, and welcome to the Locked On Big Ten Podcast, a part of the Locked On Podcast Network. I'm your host, Ben Stevens. It is Wednesday, April 7th, and joining us today is our man who is back quickly. We hadn't had him on the show for like a month's time now for the second time in like six days. Kevin McGuire, the host of Locked On Nittany Lions, is back to be a part of our spring football tour. I stopped by his house. He had the bags packed. He hopped on the virtual bus and we roll on to Happy Valley and talk about the Penn State Nittany Lions in-state college and their spring practices going on as we speak. So Kevin McGuire, pleasure to have you back on the podcast and to be talking some football with you looking ahead to next year, 2021. I'm very excited not just to be here with you, Big Ten, Ben, but to talk about some actual spring football because, as I'm sure we'll get into, this is something we didn't have last year. Penn State didn't have their spring practices last year. Uh, We saw what happened in the fall. I'm not saying it's directly related, but it's probably directly related. And it's just so good to have a spring football going on right now. Uh, Looking forward to what could potentially be a much improved team uh, coming up later in the fall. But, of course, lots of work to do in the spring. And Kevin, we're going through our spring football tour. We're going division by division. This is the third stop through the Big Ten East, and that might surprise people to recognize that Penn State still finished third in the East Division despite the struggles to start off the 2020 Big Ten football season, starting 0-5 for the first time in program history, but then rattled off four straight wins to end out the regular season and that Big Ten Champions Week victory as well to finish the year 4-5. and They've been using and have been saying throughout these spring workouts, they've had 0-5 posted in the weight room. They are using it as motivation. What do you make of that approach? I love it. And I'm not too surprised by this because this is a program that has a lot of pride. And this is a program that under James Franklin had won 11 games three out of the previous four years before last year. So Mm -hmm. I take what happened last year. Yeah, a lot of things were going on last year. Penn State had to deal with a lot of problems that a lot of other programs were too. And I've talked with you before. I got to a point where I started to stop using that excuse Right. And just accept things for what it was. But you know what? We saw that there were some good teams that were going across Penn State's way. Indiana turned out to be a very good team. Ohio State, of course, right out of the gate uh, in week two. Uh, not the greatest situation to be in for Penn State after losing that game to Indiana. Uh, obviously had some uh, issues with getting the offense moving. But you know, I think that you can take that, and that is a big motivating factor. The fact that they did end the season on a positive note. I think if you look deeper into that 0-5 start, they weren't a terrible 0-5 team. (laughs) They just had a lot of breaks go against them, and uh, that caught up to them. But I do think that there was a lot of reason to be um, optimistic about where Penn State was potentially heading in the grand scheme of things and ending the year with some positive uh, energy, some a little bit of a winning streak. Obviously, didn't get a chance to break even at 500 with a bowl game, but This is a program now that has taken some of the lumps, they've learned from them, and now they're looking to just kind of make sure that that issue doesn't happen again. And so far, so good. Obviously, a long way to go, but uh, I do think that there's a lot of talent here. There's too much good talent on the roster, too much talent on the coaching staff, and there's a lot of reason to be optimistic about uh, significant bounce back later in the fall. Although it is a challenging schedule, but I know we'll talk about that later in the summer. Yeah, we'll get to that middle of July. We'll do the schedule breakdown for Penn State. But as we focus on the spring, the main question I think a lot of people have as they look at Penn State is at the quarterback position. It will be Sean Clifford this upcoming 2021 college football season. What do you expect out of the signal caller for Penn State this year? Well, you're going to be talking about a guy that's going into his third season uh, as the starting quarterback. And I think the fact that they've got a new offensive coordinator in Mike Yurcich, I think that that's going to be a really big asset for Sean Clifford because you've seen what uh, Yurcich has been able to do with quarterbacks previously, including Sam Ellinger at Texas. And I do think that uh, having a guy that's both a veteran quarterback and having a good offense coordinator and quarterback coach working with him, first of all, getting a chance to do that in the spring, that should really help Sean Clifford as far as his productivity and his effectiveness in the fall. I still think that there's probably going to be some roadblocks. There's going to be some uh, issues here and there, as we have seen from Sean Clifford the last couple of years. But I do think cutting back on the mistakes and the self-inflicted wounds and trying to do too much, I think that that's going to be scaled back. And I do think that that's going to be pay- something that will pay dividends for Penn State. Now, the big question is actually the depth at the quarterback position, because if Sean yeah. Clifford does go down or if he does have some struggles, there's not a lot of experience to back up on. So That's going to be one of the storylines as we get to the end of the spring and something that's been an ongoing discussion about where James Franklin and the staff may potentially look into the transfer portal if they feel like they need to add something to that quarterback depth. But Sean Clifford's going to be the guy. 
It's just a matter of uh, how long he's, or how far he's going to be able to take Penn State. And I think that there's reason to be optimistic there. But again, if you have some concerns, that could be a little bit of an issue. And I was diving into the stats because it felt like in 2020, Sean Clifford regressed. But when you look at it overall for a short, compacted season, it wasn't all that bad when you look at the metrics. In 2019, his first year as a starter, 2,654 pass yards, 23 touchdowns, seven interceptions, also ran for 402 yards on the ground with five additional touchdowns. In a shorter 2020 season, he started all but one of the games last year, 1,800 yards or so passing, six touchdowns, nine interceptions, so a little bit higher there, 335 yards rushing still, and three touchdowns, again, in a smaller sample size in 2020. In the completion percentage, it wasn't great, but it was slightly ticked up from where it was in 2019. So I guess the overall question, as you look at 2021 in a third year as a starter for Sean Clifford, do you think he can take that next step to be better than he has been in his first two years in Happy Valley? I absolutely do think that he can take the next step. Now, I don't say that he is going to be a guy that's going to be on the same level as what Trace McSorley was able to do, but I do think that he is much better than he's being given credit for. Uh, you know, he came into Penn State. He, again, he's not one of the star-studded quarterbacks, but he's also not just an average Joe. This is a good quarterback that Penn State has. And I think if you look at the, some of the film from last season, those interceptions, they came in awful times and they set the opponents up with some really short field position go back to yeah. that indiana game i think yeah. indiana had like a, a very short touchdown drive uh right after an interception or a fumble and that was the thing the, the turnovers were so costly and i think there was just a little bit of bad luck that compounded it and made it even more worse than it really was so uh, again i'm not excusing sean clifford for some of those mistakes i do think that he has to take some of the the, the, the blame for that but I do think that he's been doing that. That's something he was asked about during the spring, you know, how he reacted to being benched and what he's learning from that. And I think that that's part of the maturity of any player. And I think that's uh, good to see out of your projected starting quarterback moving forward. I think that that's a learning experience and we'll see how far that that can take him. But again, I, I do feel like there should be confidence in Sean Clifford, probably more so than he's being given credit for nationally. And like you mentioned, he is now paired with a new offensive coordinator, Mike Bursich, who comes to State College in replacement of Kurt Sharaka, who was there last year. Only one year for Sharaka did not work out. The offensive scheme at times seems stagnant. So what can fans expect out of Mike Yursich's, wow, that's a tongue twister, Yursich's it really is. <laughs> off, but yeah, I gotta, I'm just going to say the offensive scheme of Mike Yursich. Well, I don't think you're going to see too much different from Penn State offensively this particular season because I do think that Sean Clifford may not be the ideal quarterback with his skill set for what Mike Yersich will eventually look for. I think we've already started to see that in recruiting. They're going to look for more of a pro style quarterback. And I think it's going to take a little bit of time for Mike Yersich to be able to run the offense the way that he truly wants to. That said, I do think that he's smart enough to make use of the weapons he has around him. We saw some growth in the wide receivers last year, not just a John Dotson, but you know, a guy like Parker Washington. And I think you'll see a little bit more development with some of those younger wide receivers to rely on. Got a little bit of a question mark maybe at the tight end position with uh, Brenton Strange kind of taking over after Pat Frymuth. But again, you've got some good assets to work with. And I think Mike Yersich is certainly smart enough to realize what it's going to take to get those guys to maximize the potential. And then you go back to the running game. Running, bang, running game should be pretty solid for Penn State. I don't know if it's necessarily as strong as what I thought it was going to be this time last year, but I do think that the depth of the running back position is certainly going to be something that will come into play. Now, we focused a lot on the offense, but as we speak with Locked On Nittany Lions, Kevin McGuire, one of our great friends on this podcast, a great part of the Locked On Podcast Network's college channel and the Big Ten community at large, we focused a lot on the offensive side of the ball. Let's flip to the other side of the defense. What about the defense this spring? What have you seen on that defensive side of the ball for the Penn State Nittany Lions? We're going to have a new look on the defensive line because they lost a lot of players from last year, either to the NFL or some transfers. So there's a lot of new faces that are going to be stepping in. But I do think that if you look at the history of Penn State on the defensive line, they'll be able to plug those holes. And they already have some players that they know that they can rely on, like P.J. Mustafer, who's really going to be stepping up and kind of emerging as probably their top defensive lineman going into the new year. They've added through the transfer portal a little bit. So they'll be in decent shape. I don't know if it'll be quite be as aggressive as they have been in years past, or at least at the beginning of the year. But I do think that that's probably something to be uh, keeping a close eye on. Linebackers should be okay. Obviously, they have already played without Micah Parsons last yeah. year, so they kind of uh, took that opportunity to allow some of the guys to kind of grow themselves a little bit. Jesse Lakita certainly going to be one of those guys that continues to develop and become one of the anchors of that defense. 
And then in the secondary, you've got a couple of holes to fill, but you know, obviously I feel like the secondary is in pretty decent shape. Got a new coach in there as well. So, uh, you know, the pieces are there for a pretty solid defense. I'm not saying it's one of the best defenses out there. They'll probably give up some points. They'll probably give up some yards to some certain teams on this schedule that they'll have to face. But this is a defense that is more than good enough to keep them in plenty of games. So we've talked about people that they have to replace. We've talked about some question marks. What do you think is the best returning position group as a whole that Penn State fans can expect in 2021? I'm going to go back to that wide receiver position. And this is a stark contrast to what I thought yeah. at this time last year because that was the big question for Penn State last year. But I think the emergence of Jahan Dotson – uh, from what we saw last year, one of the best wide receivers in the Big Ten. I don't know if he got enough credit from the Big Ten as far as the postseason awards were concerned. Uh, obviously, there were, there were some very good wide receivers in the Big Ten, don't get me wrong, but I think Jahan Dotson certainly is worthy of being considered one of the best wide receivers in the conference. So having him come back automatically makes them that much better at this time compared to where we were talking about this wide receiver position a year ago. And then I mentioned it, the, the development of this wide receiver crew, I think is going to be taking some big steps forward. I think you've got some younger players in there. Uh, I already mentioned Parker Washington, Keandre Lambert Smith, I think is another name to keep an eye on. I think that there is some really good potential for these wide receivers to really blossom under Mike Yorsuch's offenses. I think that that's going to be something that really helps get them on track for where they want to be this year. So I'm really excited about the wide receiver position. I may be alone in this, but I'm going to stick with it. Kevin, I remember speaking with you before the 2020 Big Ten football season, and there was very high expectation for Penn State that started ranked in the top 10 in the preseason poll. And your biggest question mark was the wide receiver position, how quickly a year can change. But also, when you have a young group that gets some playing experience and they come back for the following year, they can be something you rely on. So like we mentioned, a disappointing year in 2020 for Penn State. And we're not going to get your overall thoughts on the breakdown of the schedule right now for the 2021 college football season. The schedule is difficult. There are some tough road cross division matchups there's a couple of tough games obviously anytime you play in the big 10 east what do you think penn state can reach this year what do you think the ceiling is this early on for a penn state football team in this upcoming season i don't think it's much of a surprise to say that the ceiling for penn state is probably second place in the big 10 east uh there's a pretty good team just uh, over in ohio <laughs> that i think is gonna be pretty good once again this year so I, I think as far as anybody in this big 10 east i think that you're shooting for second place to be honest with you. And I think that Penn State is equipped enough to do that. Now, I do, like I've said before, and I get, we'll talk about it much later throughout the offseason, it is a very challenging schedule. So I do think that they're going to take some lumps. And I think that there are some really tricky spots. So they may lose a couple games. Uh, the, they may not get to 11 wins this year. But I do think uh, we could be talking about a nine-win team. Uh, if, I think if all things go well, uh, you know, again, I think it's a very challenging schedule. I don't know if they have I, – I, as much as I like – a lot of the pieces that this team has, I need to see it a little bit more because last year 0 and 5 kind of shook me a little bit. Uh, yep. So I'm, I'm not. I'm again. I think that that was the outlier. But let's see what they do to make up from that and learn from that and, and see what they do and improve on the field. I, I think it's going to be a pretty challenging season, but I think that they are good enough to make a serious run. If they get some breaks to go the way, uh, they could be in the Big Ten championship game. I won't roll it out, but. I'm not counting on it. I think this is a second-place team in the Big Ten East at best right now. The cross-divisional matchups with the Big Ten West start very early on. The season opener on the road in Camp Randall in Madison, Wisconsin against the Badgers on the road at Iowa. They also have Ohio State in Columbus, but they do get Indiana in Michigan in Happy Valley. So that a benefit right there. Now, Penn State is ending out the spring next Saturday with their final practice, not in the traditional spring game format, but in front of new freshmen on campus for Penn State, getting to show off what they have. That will be a nice celebration to end things off. What did you make of that decision from Penn State? I think it's weird to be honest with you. I think oh. if you're going to I think if you're going to allow students into the game, why not allow the seniors who missed out on all of their final uh, football games last fall, give them that opportunity. I understand giving the freshmen their first taste of what it's like to be inside Beaver Stadium for a football activity, but yeah. to me, I think the better decision would have been to go with those upperclassmen who are going to be in their final season, final, you know, semester whatever the case may be. So it's cool that fans are getting a chance to go back into Beaver Stadium. And uh, here in the state of Pennsylvania, we've uh, listed the uh, or lifted the the outdoor requirements or restrictions. So I think 25%. So sitting here right now, that 
projects pretty well. If things continue to go well over the summer, we could be talking about more fans in Beaver Stadium. But as far as the spring game is concerned, getting the families in there obviously is a must. Love that. And uh, the, the decision to allow freshmen, hey, it's cool. Uh, you know, I think it's a little weird, but I know it's been a little bit of a hot button topic, but it will be good to see fans getting a chance to gather for some sort of football activity inside Beaver Stadium as soon as possible. Now that you bring it up, I think that's a great point. I think it should be the seniors, a way to cap off their final year on campus that they didn't have that traditional football season that means so much to the folks in State College. Kevin, as we go around this virtual bus tour, the spring football tour, you are a great college football mind and a Big Ten connoisseur. Are there any other storylines you're watching throughout the entire conference this spring? Well, I already said Ohio State's just going to reload. Uh, we yeah. already know that. Uh, so I still think that that is the program to watch. I'm very curious about what's going to happen in this Big Ten West. I, I still think that there are some very interesting storylines to follow. And obviously, since Penn State's going to be opening the season against Wisconsin and they're going to make a trip out to Iowa, I'm keeping a real close eye on the Badgers and the Hawkeyes. Yeah. And uh, fortunately, we've got some terrific hosts on the Locked On Podcast Network that cover those two teams individually, in specifically. So uh, I'm very interested to see what those two teams are because I do think that those will be the teams to beat in that Big Ten West. I hear you, Northwestern fans, but you know, to me, it's all about Wisconsin, Iowa, until proven otherwise. Last year, Northwestern proved it, but I, I think uh, going in, I'm, I'm very curious about that Wisconsin offense. You know, can they get that passing game to be much more consistent uh, this season? If so, they could be very dangerous because there's a lot of hype about Wisconsin right now. And um, I'm not quite all in on the Badgers the way some people are. Uh, I'm not quite all in on Indiana the way that some people are. I know, you know I know, I know, don't, don't blast me, but here's the thing. I, I think there's a lot of uh, overreaction to what we saw from Indiana last year. I would love to see Indiana have some success again this year. Maybe not in every game <laughs> once again, but I do think that we're kind of uh, feeding off of the, the most recent season that we saw. And I think that that happens sometimes. I'm curious if Indiana is one of those teams that will come up shorter of some of those uh, way too early projections right now. Speaking of coming up short, was Michael Penix Jr. short? Yes. <laughs> I think he was as well, although a great moment and a great photo from the 2020 Big Ten football season. It was. But I think that's a very valid point, Kevin McGuire, especially when you look at other sports and how you judge things played in the middle of a pandemic, the weird 2020 year, basing all of our reactions on what we saw last season might not carry over to a full, more normal schedule that we have with spring practice, hopefully a full fall camp as well, and then a full 12-game slate for the 2021 college football season, giving us all the information we can need on the third stop on the spring football tour here on the Locked On Big Ten podcast. The host of Locked On Nittany Lions, Kevin McGuire, back on the show. It was a pleasure to have you. Great insight as always on those Nittany Lions and what, can we, what we can expect to the rest of spring and leading up to the 2021 college football season. Thanks, Kevin. And always a pleasure. Thanks for having me on.